guys, it's Robbie here, and this is Frecky Fitwell. So today I'm going to be showing some exercises, uh, the resistant band exercise to be exact. And a lot of you guys have asked what I've been doing. I do want to clarify, in case it's not obvious, I am not an expert. I am not trained in anything. This is just what I have picked up from internet research, talking to some trainers online, and uh, watching other YouTube videos. A big help that I have is from VinX, and so I will put a link to a video, and a lot of what I'm doing is actually in this video, if not everything. I think everything but one thing is in this particular video, so feel free to go watch him, but if not, watch a fat guy do the exercise. Second thing with that, yes, I say fat guy exercise. Now, I am one of those people that words do not offend me unless they're meant a certain way. So for me, it is simply a descriptive term. My body type is in the fat category, it is obese. I actually like fat more than obese. And so when I say that, it's not a low self-esteem thing, it is not an insulting myself thing, it is simply a descriptive term, and plus I am one of those people that do believe taking power back from the words. There are several other words that can be used to apply towards me, and again, those do not offend me unless you mean them in an offensive way. So that aside. Third thing, just real quick, just because I saw it this morning <clears throat> before I was doing this video, um, I track bikes, the app that I use for the Weight Watchers plans, they actually started a new thing where I believe weekly they are doing exercise videos online. And I watched today's and it was informative. Like it gave you some tips for some stuff to do at home and the guy demonstrates several of them, which is really, really cool and helpful. So if you are on iTrack Bites and you're looking for more ways to get active without having to download a million apps. They have started doing that. I'm curious to see where it goes and how it goes, but so far the first one was some basic stuff for at home, which is kind of helpful. All right, so now this thing in my hand. This is the bag that I hold my resistant bands in. I got this from Up and Up. It's on Amazon. They're not sponsoring or anything. I do have an affiliate link down below because I'm an Amazon affiliate, but that's about as much kickback as I would get if you decide to buy them on there. But I just kind of like them because one, the bag is awesome. Because if you guys know, I've been carrying around this other band that I got from Aldi, which did not have much information with it, first of all, over here. And, and you know, this plus four more, it can get kind of obnoxious. So I can fit all the four that came with it, plus this one in this bag. And that's kind of helpful. And plus then if you're gonna go exercise in the backyard or go somewhere else you can easily travel and if not when you're done at least all of your workout equipment is put away so that's pretty cool to me um, now this does come with four different bands so we've got the big guy we've got a, a green one we've got an orange one you can tell which ones I uh, have not put away and then we have a yellow one so, and all of these have different poundage, different resistance strengths. And so they do not say on there, but they do on the website, on Amazon. So I actually, the little information thing that came with it, I wrote down what the different colors resistance are, just so I can keep track of my progress. So, and for different exercises, you need different resistance. So like say the orange one, this guy here, this is the small one. This one is 15 to 35 pounds. So what that means is it takes 15 pounds of pressure to initiate the stretch. And it, at max stretch, you would be using 35 pounds of pressure. So that's your resistance. And the green one here is 25 to 65 pounds. The yellow is 35 to 85 pounds. And the big honker here is 50 to 125 pounds. So depending on who you are, you could be using different ones. And there are different exercises that you would use different strengths on. So even while I'm doing my exercises today, I will be switching up what bands I am using. So that's why I do think it's important to have several different bands. All right, now let's go ahead and get into it. All right, doing a voiceover because I got very out of breath in the middle of this and stumbled over a lot of stuff. But we're gonna start with squats. And for this, you get in your normal squat stance with how, as far as where your legs are, you wanna keep it down below your hips. And you're gonna squat down first and just pop it, it's a little bit tricky, pop it over your head. And that way you're able to stand up like normal, 
If you can't stand up all the way, get a weaker band. And from here, you're just going to go into starting to do squats. I kind of explained them in the last video, but we'll go again here. And as soon as I actually get going, I talked a lot. Maybe that's why I was out of breath. All right, so you just start squatting down. You're kicking your butt out and going straight down. And let me do a little waddle. That way you can see from the side. So you are, again, keeping your core straight and just squatting down and making sure your knees do not go in front of your toes. And I was watching a video and so somebody was explaining it. It was kind of helpful. I think it was the one on the iTrack Bites app. Pretend you're carrying groceries, as I'm showing there, and you're closing the door, the car door, with your butt. So you're kicking that out and then going down. You're not just leaning forward. You want to try to keep your shoulders as close to above your feet as possible and your knees from going in front of your feet. Otherwise, that can cause some knee problems. And I'm talking for no apparent reason. All right, so the next one I am going to be getting into with that green band are the single arm rows. I forgot what they were called in the middle of there. There we go. So single arm rows. So these are going to help work your, your back and your arms. You want to take it and you fold it and just step on a section of it. You, this will take some adjusting. Every one of these, when you are using your foot to stabilize the band, you will have to adjust where you stand. So for me, about there seemed like a good idea. And that way I had just that little bit left over and I'm only working with the other one. In the video that I am linking below, he does actually loop it the other way around the foot. I was watching after as I was recording, after I was recording and I was editing. So you can do that. Pretty much you can adjust this how you want. You can even hook this onto a door handle to get a different angle and it will target different muscles in your arm and your back. But again, the key part is keeping your back straight. And when you're leaning forward like that, you want to bend your knee, but you do not want to lock it in place. And the back leg is just pretty much straight out to stabilize yourself and not locking anything. Locking joints can lead to injury. All right, so I'm going to show you on the other side the same exact thing. And one thing that I forgot to say earlier is keep in mind that all of these exercises I'm just doing for a split second just to show you the form. I typically do them in 30 second intervals and then I wait and then I do 30 second intervals and I go from one exercise to the next, do all of them and then repeat the whole thing all over again. And I do that three times, <clears throat> but it's up to you. Some people will choose like, okay, I'm going to do the arm rows. I'm going to do a set of 10 and move on. Do a set of 10 of the next thing. Whichever you are most comfortable with, I like to keep my tempo going and not focus on the number. I do typically kind of count as I'm doing it and write that down afterwards so I can keep track of what I was able to do in 30 seconds. But again, it's not about speed. It's not about the highest number. It's keeping your form straight and you can tell by your muscles if you are doing it properly and if you are making progress but you don't know where to go from there if you don't write down what you did. So I'm kind of glad that I recorded this because I can actually see and it's easier for me to write down. I was using the green for the arm rows and go from there. The next one that I am going to be doing here are deadlifts. These actually help your legs, your glutes, your core, your back, your shoulders, pretty much everything. Um, you want to do as if you're gonna do a squat and go like that and you're just lifting straight up now me watching I'm kind of questioning so I'm glad that I didn't do a full workout and that's why I kind of didn't want to do a full workout while recording because uh, as I was distracting myself with talking to the camera my shoulders are rolled a little bit forward in case you can't tell when you do a deadlift you want your shoulders rolled back and keep your back and spine straight that is going to give you more proper form and it's going to help you from injuring yourself as I drop my notebook here. Okay, so I'm going to show you again from the sides and this is where I can really tell my shoulders were not proper. Um, so do not copy my form there. Do 
everything except the shoulders. Roll them back and that will help you a lot get proper uh, results from this without hurting yourself. And that will also help strengthen your shoulders a little bit more. Um, so keep that in mind. All right, next one I am going to do, I believe here is the tricep kickback. It is, yeah. This is another one. Again, when I get into it, I, I'll, I'll explain what I am doing wrong. I am not having perfect form because I got in my head while recording this. I'm not going to lie. This is new for me, showing my entire body and all of that jazz. But you do want to wait. I'm going to realize you can't see what the heck I'm doing. And wait for it. Let me spin around. There we go, Robert. The camera is that way. So maybe you should show that side. All right. So... I'm going to mess up a little bit at first, um, but actually that one was good. You want to bend your arm back so that it's a 90 degree angle and then back like that. That one was good. That, no. I, I just started keeping my arm straight and going straight back, which does help. It is beneficial. You can feel it, but the proper form is how I did it at first with pulling forward with your arm bent and then straightening it. So I have a lot of work to do, which is you know, again, progress, not perfection. I should have worn that shirt again. Uh, but it, as I am explaining, it is important to keep in mind of your back and your legs so that you're not locking joints. You're keeping your back straight. That will help you from injuring yourself while you're doing things at home. Um, again, on this side, let's see if I do it a little bit better. Uh, well, I thought I was going to perfectly, but I did adjust the band. Wait, oh, and I'm going to fall. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Um, I did adjust the band, which is important. Figure out what works for you. That, that one was not working. So let's get a little bit more resistance. And as I watch, I probably should not have. But that is a little bit better. I needed a little bit less resistance because I can't straighten my arm all the way, which not perfect. But you're bending your arm back and then straightening it. That is what is important. All right. Next one I am going into. What am I doing here? Uh, I have written down lateral raises. Is that what I did? I don't. We'll see. We'll see. Is that? Yep, that is what I'm doing. Okay, lateral raises. Sorry, some of these I did out of order of what I wrote down. But you do want to stand straight. You want to keep your knees relaxed. I just realized that band is way too strong for this for me because, again, my triceps are my weaker part. And you will be hitting those a little bit on this. So, again, you will be standing straight, relaxed knees. So you're not locking and you're just going to pull straight up and that is going to work your shoulders as well as some of your arm. Um, you want to try to keep your back straight. I do notice that I am tilting a little bit. I probably should have lessened up on the bands. I think it's actually a good lesson for me as well for you guys. Maybe record yourself doing something so you can see your form. I don't have a giant mirror that I can watch what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So do a little bit of it so that you can kind of watch what you're doing. There I go. Finally realized that I was making it a little too tense, loosened it up, and then that is a lot better. And you're going to go straight up. And with the position of my hand, that is one thing I noticed. Um, when I had my hand sideways or straight with the palm facing down, it did end up hurting uh, by my elbow a little bit on that hand. And so, and you can see I switch to turning my hand as I go up on some of them. No, I, that one I'm doing properly. Okay, it was just the other arm that I did. So again, not an expert. I'm not a trained professional. Keep that in mind. All right, the next thing that I am going to be getting into when I'm done talking here, what am I talking about? Okay, there we go. I didn't write this one down I because I did this out of order. I am doing the bicep curl with overhead reach. This one, of course, will be working on your biceps, but since you throw in the overhead reach, it does also help with other muscles, including your shoulder. And so it's pretty simple. You just pretend like you have a dumbbell because that is one that I was doing in the gym, and you just bicep curl it up and go straight up. And that seems easy, but over time, it really you really start feeling it, especially with these resistant bands. That's one thing that I love about resistance bands. And as you fully extend, you are getting maximum resistance. So it gets harder at those points rather than the same constant pressure 
the entire time when you're using dumbbells or, or weights. Not that one is better than the other, it just gives you different results and can help you. So I'm just going through, doing the other side. This is pretty, pretty basic. You can even do another modified form where you are stepping on it and you're not doing the overhead reach, but you have each side and each hand and doing bicep curls. The video that I linked below will have that demonstration. All right, so here, ignore the mess on top of my fireplace, but I was trying to show you that you do need for the next one, for crunches, you do need something stationary. Whether it be a door handle or a pole or something, I'm using this random part on my uh, fireplace. And you take the band and you poke it through there. Come on, Robert, you can do it. There we go, loop it, and that way it will stay. That way, for this part, you're not gonna use your feet. I am using a exercise ball. It does help, makes it a little bit easier. Um, so yeah. So you, you just get on the ball and then you slide down and you are going to do your crunches that way. So that way you can just lift and go at it and you have that added resistance instead of just your body weight. Obviously, you can do crunches whichever way is most comfortable. You can do them flat on the floor. You cannot use the resistance. Whatever is beneficial. I do find that I f feel that a little bit more as I go through it. And it is important with, especially when you are doing the added exercise ball and the band to get the curl to your back. You're curling forward. You're not just bent, keeping your back straight and going forward. That's a completely different muscle group you'll be targeting. Still can do those, but that's not the purpose of the crunch and working on that section of the abs. All right, so I'm actually sweatier than I thought it would be from that considering I did not do a full workout. But hopefully that helps some. Um, I know I've messed up a lot, so the editing of this is going to be fun uh, to try to make it all make sense. I'll probably just do a voiceover. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know if this helps you. These type of things really help me, especially at home, especially for those of us that are a little bit more introverted uh, and gyms are closed right now anyway, but doing stuff at home that way, if the weather is not gorgeous, if this isn't going on, we can still find a way to be active. So this is what I am particularly doing. There are a million different ways to do these things, but I know several of you have asked for tips for stuff at home. And like I said, those bands, I think for the whole set, I'm not even going to quote a price. I'll just put the link below because I don't remember the price. Um, but they were pretty affordable considering that you get four. If you can't afford four right off the bat, just get one for now because even with the the smaller ones you can just tie them you can step on them in a different spot to make the resistance stronger you can do things to help um i like having the option of having the different bands that way you're not having to keep readjusting and there's the the, the weakest band can only go so far that is wonderful for my arms especially back here because that's my weakest part but there's no way I could get that mini band to work for when I'm doing leg stuff or core stuff because there's just not enough resistance. But so at least two, I like this set of four plus the bag. Um, and like I said, the one that I was using way before I got these, I got from Aldi. They're not carrying them right now, but you know, they will eventually. It doesn't have to be an expensive, expensive one, just something that will help. All right, so that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching and like my video, comment, let me know if this was helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.